It's that time of year again where we see all the new models and updates coming out from the big running brands and in particular Nike Trail. Now to say that I've been disappointed with the performance of their trail running shoes when it comes to running in sort of wet UK conditions would be a massive understatement because I found some of their rubber to be very slippy and pretty dangerous when running on wet rocky trails and I've really struggled with traction in muddy conditions. However, the wild horse has just gone through a massive update and it is a completely different shoe this time round when you compare it to the previous model, the Wild Horse 7. So let's jump into the video and take the new Wild Horse 8s out for their first run. Welcome back folks. Hope everybody is fit and well out there in YouTube world. I'm Lloyd Purvis and this is Run For Adventure. So it is Nike trail running shoe review time here at the channel and it's always around about this time when I cross my fingers tightly and hope for the best because I know there is gonna come a time when Nike trail just get everything right and they produce a great trail running shoe for UK conditions and you never know, it could be this one. Before we get stuck into some stats, I just wanna pull up a side by side picture of the current wild horse that I'm holding in my hand and the previous version, the sevens, just so you can see, it is a completely different shoe this time round. So not really an update, it's more like a, a remodel. So this is a brand new shoe from the ground up. I personally think that is a good move by Nike because the sixes and sevens weren't great trail running shoes, especially on the trails I run on. And this one actually looks quite familiar. I think Nike have done a, like a full circle with the wild horse shoe because this looks very similar to the four and fives. When it comes to information on Nike's website about the wild horse, it is pretty vague. And when I mean vague, I mean proper vague. So no information about the heel offset, about the stack height of that midsole, or even the lug depth. And surely these things are really important. Those details need to be on a website. And you know, I've got a YouTube channel, I buy shoes to review. I personally think if I was buying this just to run in, the lack of details would have put me off purchasing it in the first place. But what do you think, guys? Do you uh, think those lack of details, the lack of information about the specs of the shoe, would that put you off buying a pair? Let us know in the comments below because it really is the least amount of information I've ever seen on a running shoe on the Nike website. However, I can tell you that they retail for £115 here in the UK. And actually, Nike have got a deal going at the moment. So if you are a member of Nike and you spend over £100 on their website, you get a 20% discount. So you could actually pick these up for a very reasonable £92. And that is great value. Uh, Weight-wise, in my size, a UK 9.5, they come in at a pretty hefty 343 grams. So this definitely isn't a lightweight trail shoe. When it comes to that new upper design, Nike have gone for a twin mesh construction. So on the outside, we've got this slightly more durable feeling perforated fabric. And then internally, we've got a nice soft blue material. Uh, that tongue is gusseted into the upper and it's quite a thin design, but I actually tried them on indoors just to check the sizing and that tongue feels super plush across the top of my foot and it offered me really good lockdown. The ankle collar and heel cup have a moderate level of padding, but they do feel quite stiff and quite rigid. Now I know it's a brand new shoe so it might just take a bit of time to soften up and bed in but I've had similar setups to this on trail running shoes before and they have ended up causing a bit of irritation sort of in my ankle bone where that collar is quite stiff. Um, so we're going to keep an eye on that on today's run, see how comfortable it is. We've got some overlays around the heel, around the lace eyelets and the toe box just for a bit of extra durability. Unfortunately not for protection so again another Nike shoe with no toe bumper that toe is super soft so I would say the guys who design their trail shoes have never stubbed their toe on a rock when they've been running on the trails. When it comes down to that midsole construction, Nike have gone for a full React foam midsole. Now I'm a big fan of this compound when it comes to comfort and energy return. However, in the past, I have found it a little bit unstable when running on uneven ground, depending on the stack height. So I'm happy to see that Nike have kind of worked this light blue guide rail in around the shoe, or as they call it, a midfoot sand 
saddle, uh, a very similar setup to uh, what we had on the Pegasus Trail 4, and I was a big fan of that midsole. Apparently, we've got a rock plate in the heel, or at least that's what it says on the Nike website. Uh, there's no mention of any rock plate in the forefoot, which is a little bit odd. Uh, but if we flip it over to the all-important outsole, you can see that we've got a pretty chunky and aggressive lug layout, and this is definitely a good thing to see because I really have struggled when it comes to traction in muddy conditions in some of the previous Nike trail shoes that I've run in. But this outsole looks like it might handle the mud really well. So you should get a fair bit of bite out of those lugs, but Nike also claim that they've updated the rubber compound on the outsole. So you now get a combination of their high abrasion rubber, but also mitten rubber on the outsole. And this is to give enhanced levels of grip when you're running ascents or descents, even if it's in wet conditions. And just to make it clear, that's Nike's words and not mine. So you can see some pretty big changes all round and Nike have done it again. They've produced a pretty good looking shoe in my eyes in a nice colorway. And they've also made some pretty bold claims on their website again when it comes to the performance. So I think it's about time we test them out and see if those claims are right. We are heading to a place called Tahiti Woods for today's run and it's a regular sort of testing ground for shoes at the channel. Uh, we're definitely gonna put them through their paces because there's a big mixture of different terrain there. Some pretty muddy, slippy, rooted trails, but we've also got some hard standing. So let's get these laced up and let's get running. made it to Tahiti Woods, parked in a slightly different location this time to what we normally do, so I could get to test out the new wild horse on a nice long section of sort of tarmac and compacted trails. And I have to say, credit where credit's due, this new updated shoe is very comfortable straight out of the box. That React midsole handled the hard stuff really well, as it always does, but also the upper feels really plush. I feel really well dialed into that heel, so no movement in the heel at all, but really nicely locked down around that midfoot. And I mentioned it back at the house, that tongue system just feels so comfortable across the top of my foot. Uh, it feels like I'm running in a really comfortable pair of old slippers. It's that comfortable. Now, obviously we've only had nice, hard, compacted trail up to now and Nike trail shoes tend to handle that really well. So we've had a bit of rain over the last few days. So let's get on some more technical trails. Let's go and find some mud and some slippery tree roots and give this new wild horse a thorough testing. We go. to say we have definitely found some mud and we are just entering into one of the more technical trails here in the woods so lots of slippery tree roots lots of deep standing mud puddles great section to run but it's also a section we ride on the mountain bikes is always good fun this is really going to test that outsole out but so far can't believe i'm saying it feels good no slippage no loss of traction it's handling everything really well. But let's see how he gets on with the really boggy stuff. It feels like everyone around us seems to know. Well, I have to say it, that went rather well and that trail down there was actually a lot wetter and a lot muddier than I thought it was gonna be. So we must have had more rain, but the outsole soaked it all up with ease. So no loss of traction in the muddy bits and it was pretty boggy and no slipping on those wet tree roots, which is a pretty hard thing to achieve with a trail running shoe. So yeah, 
as far as that muddy technical section, the new wild horse passed with flying colours. So as we're bobbing along in the woods guys, don't forget if you are enjoying the content on the channel and you find it helpful to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It only takes a second to do and it is completely free but it really does help us out and it would be greatly appreciated. Also, if you haven't seen, I'm actually rocking our new running cap. So fully bespoke, 100% recycled materials, lots of great run for adventure detailing and some high vis for safer nighttime running. Super premium quality, very comfortable to run in, highly breathable. They're available now on runforadventure.uk got to say a massive thanks to all the supporters of the channel who have placed orders. We've sold 70% of stock already, so there isn't many left. So be quick guys, because we're not sure when we'll have them back in stock. So yeah, go and check them out on runforadventure.uk. Okay, we are all done and that's a good 8.15 miles in the legs and in the shoes and I gotta say it, that has been a really enjoyable run. I would say that the new Wild Horse is what I'd call a very easy shoe to run in. So you literally take it out of the box, put it on your feet, lace it up and off you go. And I haven't really had any issues to speak of at all. So really good fitting upper on my foot shape, very plush, very comfortable. I haven't had to stop and readjust the laces or get that lockdown back. It just feels super secure around my midfoot and it's performed really well on all the terrain in the woods. I mean, I haven't really got anything negative to say about the shoe at all. And if you just tuned in, yes, I am talking about a Nike trail shoe. There's maybe a couple of things that could be slightly tweaked, but if I'm honest, that'd just be me splitting hairs. So let's get back to the studio and let's break down the performance of the Wild Horse 8 in a little bit more detail. Okay, we are back from the run and I still have a big smile on my face. Number one, because it was great to be back into Hiddy Woods and get another strong run in my legs. But number two, I think that was the best first run I've ever had in a Nike trail running shoe to date. Now, I really enjoyed the Pegasus Trail 4s when we took them out for their first run, but the Wild Horse 8s performed even better. And if I'm honest, it's just nice to come back and feel excited about a trail running shoe from Nike rather than disappointed. Like I just mentioned, I did enjoy running in the Pegasus Trail 4s, but I did find the toe box quite constricting. It was super shallow on depth, whereas the Wild Horse has a bit more volume but definitely more width as well so plenty of wiggle room there in the toe box feels like it'll give you enough space for your feet to expand over time as well and I just think the whole upper works well for my foot shape so uh, the laces didn't work loose while I was running so I felt as well locked in at the end of the run as I did at the beginning and before we went out I had my doubts about how stiff this ankle collar was but I really shouldn't have done because it was actually extremely comfortable and I felt well held uh, in the heel as well. So I've actually enjoyed every element of the upper. No irritation, no rubbing, just a really nice place to be. The only thing I would change is to have the addition of a toe bumper. Now it's not essential, but it really is a feature that I look for in my trail running shoes, just in case I do happen to stub my toe on a rock while I'm out running on the trails. As far as midsole performance goes, well, it performed really well on everything. So super comfortable on those sections of hard stuff. Uh, it felt like it was slightly deeper in cushioning compared to the Pegasus Trail 4s, but I did feel very stable and very connected when I picked up those more technical and uneven sections. Uh, very comfortable straight out of the box. Feels like a shoe that would be really good at soaking up those long runs on a big mix of different terrains. Speaking of long runs, I'm going to be doing a long run test in the shoe soon, and I'm going to make sure it's on a very technical section of coast path. So if you'd like me to bring the cameras along on that run, let us know in the comments below. Last but not least, we have to talk about Nike's Achilles heel, and that is outsole performance. And 
I was actually surprised how challenging it was underfoot in the woods today. So we must have had a lot of rain overnight because there were some real muddy sections, which was definitely a good thing because we really got to test out thoroughly the level of traction from these new chunky lugs. And I have to say it, it was really good, even in the you know heavy, muddy, boggy stuff. So I think that comes down to the, the lug design. So I've actually measured them since we got home. They're five mil in depth, the lugs, but I think the layout really works well. In the past with Nike trail shoes, I've often found the mud that they just cling onto the mud and they bung up and that's when you start slipping and sliding around, whereas that didn't happen today. So I think the spacing of the lug allows that mud to clear quickly. So the traction stays. Also, it started raining towards the end of the run. I hit a couple of really sort of greasy road sections and this uh, rubber compound actually offered really good levels of grip and that definitely hasn't always been the case when it comes to Nike trail running shoe outsoles. Obviously, this is just our first run, first impressions, and I think the real test will come when we take the wild horse out on the coast path. So that is exactly what we're gonna do for that long run test. I'm probably gonna head towards Zena, super challenging section of coast path. I know there's gonna be lots of water, lots of mud, but also more importantly, lots of wet rock and different types of rock. So it really will be the sort of ultimate test when it comes to that outsole performance. Off the back of today's run, I think it'll actually handle those conditions conditions really well. So you can see a very positive first outing in the new wild horse and I'm actually excited to get them back on my feet and take them for another run and I don't think that's ever happened in a Nike trail shoe before. Uh, the only thing I would say is coming in at 340 grams it's not the lightest shoe in the world and I'd like to see maybe 30 or so grams shaved off the weight. Uh, don't get me wrong, it, it doesn't run heavy. It's funny how some shoes, when they weigh that sort of weight, you, you know, they feel clunky and quite hard to run in and heavy, but this actually felt really well balanced and quite nimble underfoot. However, I think a slight weight reduction would improve that performance even more. There you have it, folks. A very surprising conclusion to our first run in the Nike Wild Horse 8. And I personally think it's just great to have lots of positive feedback and I think that this is a big step in the right direction for the Nike Trail brand when it comes to this latest update. Uh, we're obviously going to continue to run in the shoe, put miles into the shoe, including that long run test and then we'll be back with a full in-depth review but it'd be great to hear from you guys. You know, if you've grabbed a pair of these and you've taken them out for a run, what do you think? Are you really impressed with the update? Are you excited to run in the shoe? Let us know in the comments below. But for now guys, thanks for watching, thanks for supporting the channel, really hope you've enjoyed the video and you found it helpful. We'll be back here very very soon but as always stay safe and keep on running. When it comes to information on the Nike website about the new wild horse, uh, the... the <laughs> when it comes to this new upper, Nike have kind of gone for a two... And then internally you might just be able to pick it up, uh, a lighter blue fabric poking through the holes... <laughs> Slightly more durable feeling perforated fabric on the outsole. On the outsole? <laughs> no, we haven't got any fabric on the outsole. Although, sometimes Nike trail shoes feel like it's got fabric on the outsole.